Jay Kavanagh, thank you very much for coming down. What's happening, lads? Thank you very much for having How me. How are you keeping? How's the week been? Good, yeah. Long. Yeah. Walk, walk, <laughs> walkful. Very walkful. Very That's walkful. the way I've described <laughs> my weeks lately. Um, busy. Like it's it's good, but it's it's all madness. But it's good madness. You know. Good, yeah, good yeah. problems to have, as I exactly, always say. Exactly. Exactly. We have a little tradition on the podcast where we kick off each episode with a question the previous guest left. So our last guest was Keen McCartan who's an amateur MMA fighter, he's left a question for you that Lee is going to read out. Brilliant. Yes, he did. So, Kane's question was, well, it was a two-part kind yeah. of question. Right. The first one was, do you have a short-term goal? And does your short-term goal lead to your long-term goal? That's a good question. <laughs> Kane, that's a good question. Wherever they come that's a good question. Um, yeah, so short-term goal for me would be obviously just take social media where the highest I can take it for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. um, obviously now I'm just showing 25k on Instagram just yeah, yeah. after passing 70k on TikTok so okay. ideally I'd like to hit 100k on both big goal for a short time especially do you know what I mean I've always done a thing off one of my friends called Adam Power he said does this thing he does marketing and he does with his client he goes ABC goals okay. so an A goal is basically something that you can achieve within the next two weeks three weeks B goal being the next month two months and then a C goal is your biggest goal like like that your long term goal okay, yeah. so I think A goal is definitely get to 50k on Instagram which I think is possible but the rate I'm kind of going at now with the content I'm putting out just from the analytics and analysing everything and being really like over the top of everything oh, and yeah, looking yeah. at the little small things I think it's definitely achievable so um, yeah to answer the question sorry short term <laughs> goal definitely build up the, the Instagram and the TikTok um, and then long term goal try and get to over 100k by the end of the year with that long-term goal of being at 100k, even beyond that, let's say you hit the point where you're at 100k, what would you like to do once you're at that point? Like, what's the? Do you have an idea what the big play is for you? Yeah, so the big play, obviously, like with, with my social media, I've always said like that I want to help as many people as possible. But like when I first started social media, the way I wanted to do it was that I wanted to obviously help people, inspire yeah. people, motivate people to chase their dreams, no matter the circumstance. And you can kind of see that a little bit in my content. And I want to just keep going with that. I want to keep doing it, like bring it to fruition all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a fellow that I follow called Johnny Davis. Um, I don't know whether you know him, he's, no. he does a lot of running, he just ran the the underground of London, like the tube, oh, and really? the whole length of the tube, I think it was Jeez. 560 kilometres or something. Some guy on it's sweaty um, down there as it's, well. So. It's crazy, <laughs> like, um, so basically what he's done is, he started social media, he's built like a run club, say, off it, but he has thousands of people coming out with him, like, just going on runs, something so simple, but because of that, you're helping people, like, with, say, mental, physical, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean, like, stuff yeah. like that, I'd love that kind of stuff, do you know? Um, so that's what ideally what I'd like to do. I'd like to obviously go and do a little bit more presenting. Um, I'd love to just do so many things. Like I have so many things in my head um, that I want to kind of do because at the end of the day, why not like try yeah. everything? Do you uh, know, life is short. Um, yeah. But yeah, long term goal. Like I have obviously build the socials, help as many people as possible, and um, do a bit, a little bit more presenting. Um, travel a lot more. I want to travel mm. a lot more. I want to try and be a lot more kind of like in the moment, the present because. Lately, the way things have gone, I've only kind of done every like I've tried to do it, but it hasn't really worked. Yeah. Um, which I know is it's kind of really good to be in the moment and be present with, with yourself and where you are and how far you've come and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, that's the big goals for me. <laughs> isn't it? No, it's a good one. The um, yes. it's kind of hard to believe that you have a life outside of Instagram with the amount of time you're posting <laughs> it's, on it. It's crazy. What man. does a day in the life of Jake having look like when you're away from your phone? Yeah, so when I'm away from my phone, like <laughs> I get up obviously. Because I'm trying at the moment, I'm trying for a photo shoot in December with my, one of my friends, Troy Sutton. So he's um, he's doing this thing with creators saying that like, it doesn't matter how busy you are, you can still train, you can still be in the best shape of your life, do you know what I mean? No matter what. Um, I've definitely put that to the test by getting <laughs> up at five o'clock every morning. Yeah, yeah. It is absolutely boxy. It is <laughs> like just not the one, but at the end of the day, if you really do want something, if you really want to work so towards something, you're going to do it no matter what, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Um, like, have to keep telling myself that every morning because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just it's so difficult getting up in the morning like <laughs> but yeah so i normally start my day by getting up a quarter past five leave the house for about 20 past five get to the gym mm -hmm. because the gym is really close to me it's really good i think if the gym was a little bit further it kind of like yeah, put yeah. me off a little bit, bit more, more friction like, a little yeah, bit more yeah. driving like you know what i mean um so i get to the gym every morning for about 20 to 20 to 6 yeah 20 to 6 i get in start my workout finish up after about an hour an hour and a half and um, come home get showered get changed breakfast out the door for work eight hours done then i'd come home and like obviously when i'm on like i get a little breaks and work or whatever yeah. whenever i can or sometimes i'll schedule posting and all that kind of stuff which is yeah, a really yeah. big tool like it's just making your life easier using all these tools to make your life easier and um, especially with social media so many tools out there that can make things so much like so much more seamless do you know what i mean yeah um so obviously i'd walk come home do more editing record more content if i have work on like Say if I have events on that kind of stuff, I'll have content already there done that yeah, I can just yeah. post then, do you know what I mean? So I'm not kind of 
I'm not stressing myself as much now. I still stress not putting out like as much content as yeah, I want. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, like my my thing at the minute is I'm trying to upload four times a day, which I've done kind of really consistently myself over the last kind of two months, three months. Um, now obviously you have your days where I've only uploaded twice or three times a time, but like mm-hmm. that, it's more than one a day. Like I've uploaded more than once a day over the last like four months or something. So. Nice. <laughs> Consistent. Then I come home, go to bed. <laughs> and do it all again the next, next one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, What's interesting about you, Jay, is for people who hear the word creator, they probably think of someone who just sits on their phone all day coming yeah. up with shit to do. You're an interesting breed <laughs> who's a creator, but also you're in your final year of an apprenticeship, is it, at I the am, moment? Yeah, just yeah. tell us a bit about that. What is it your apprenticeship's in? Yeah, so I'm doing, at the moment, I'm doing an apprenticeship in electrical engineering, or ESS is the term for the apprentice, like that's the apprenticeship yeah. term. Um, so basically, it's basically like I've always had an interest in like say electronics and like you know technology and like just kind of like it'd be a lot of um say you're doing work on alarms fire alarms security yeah. stuff um you have access control there's a lot in it like obviously depends what type you're doing like you could be doing like say electrical science and all that kind of stuff that's a whole different fucking ball game. okay yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know how people do it <laughs> um but like for my job like uh, you're using it you're using your brain a lot of the time like say yeah when you go to say um if you're doing networking or you're doing like we kind of do sometimes basic cyber security and all that kind of stuff like okay. you need to know like there's a lot you need to know in it and um, like i say it is a lot of using your brain especially with like the likes of say communications the likes of networking the likes of you know bringing systems online and it and there's a lot mm-hmm. in it like I, I don't think a lot of people know how much is really in it Goes i think people that, just yeah. think like it's even for any electrician as well people just think it's just connecting cables and it's yeah. not like <laughs> yeah. the sound like like, <laughs> yeah like it's it's not as simple as people make it out to be so it's good, like I love my job and I'm in a really good position that I can say that I actually genuinely love my job. Course, um, yeah. I know there's a lot of people that won't say that, which makes it really hard for me, do you know what I mean? Like eventually if create, being a creator did get to the level that I wanted to get to and it does, like it does hopefully get to, um, it will be quite hard for me to leave my trade and leave my job because like I actually really do like it, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's it's difficult, but like like that you need to kind of take them leaps of faith and mm, go time. for it, like but yeah okay. hopefully that's oh, a few that's more it. years down the line it's, a, it's but, a good problem to have at least isn't it yeah 100 percent. like i've always said like i'd recommend to anyone like i wasn't the best in school do you know what i mean and, and i'm sure we'll touch on more of that down the line yeah, but yeah. like just a, a little quick one like i wasn't the best in school so apprenticeship for me is perfect and uh, there's a lot of people like me that like don't like school and the best in school just not for them do you mm-hmm. know what i mean school isn't for everyone and i think like i'd like to talk about it more but like obviously i just genuinely think the education system in today's age is so outdated do you know what i mean it doesn't it doesn't teach you life lessons that like you need to know, like do you know what I mean? Um but yeah, like I obviously didn't like school at all. I think I was out of school more than I was in school. What school did you go to? I went to Fairhouse Community College okay, okay. in uh, in Fairhouse, but yeah, I think I was out of school more than I was in school. <laughs> now, that's just from just not wanting to go, yeah, being yeah, totally yeah. honest with you. Um and just feeling like I didn't need it. Like I, I used to do um so the way I used to skip school was so the school used to have my ma's old phone number, my ma changed that number, but I never changed it over in the school right, after yeah. I was told it. But it was like you know, I had, I had a little light bulb moment. Yeah. Like, hmm. <laughs> um, so basically, what would happen is I just would normally get dressed as I was going to school, say me goodbyes, go get the bus, and I go to the Tallow Library for the whole school day, just like either reading or learning about something. Do you know what I mean? And just sitting there for the whole day, then I'd go home. Get changed back into the school uniform, get the bus home. Oh, how was your day? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, learned loads in school. Yeah, and, and like, <laughs> did that for a solid, like, even through the junior year. Like, I only went there for my exams, and it was it. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, I used to go in, actually, that's a lie. I used to go in for PE. Yeah. Like, like football, and that was it. Skill <laughs> matches, yeah. <laughs> that was it, yeah, like, yeah. I have to say, uh, obviously, anyone watching the podcast probably doesn't know this, but we've known you for. Quite two months now yeah. Quite Quite about. Yeah. and the way we got to know you was uh, when we were releasing our book Better Than Before yeah. and we were reaching out to different people who we thought sort of embodied that message of yeah. chasing a big vision mm-hmm. and we reached out to a lot of people most of them ignored us <laughs> which is fine some of them got back and weren't interested but you were yeah. one of the few who were actually yeah. not only interested but like you invited us up to yeah. Michaela's house I think it was yeah. and uh, sat there had a conversation with us and even just from the interactions I think something that came across was that you are always just really down to earth and genuine which I think a lot of people when they hear like social media influencers aren't really words that they'd associate with yeah those yeah. kind of people um like growing up have you always kind of been quite humble and down to earth and as committed as you are now or is this something you've kind of learned over time um like yeah like growing up for me like like i've i'll always have time for someone that wants to better themselves because I would have, when I was growing up, I would have loved to like look up to someone like that because I didn't have many people around me that were like doing all these great things and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And for me, growing up, I've always been taught, like, say for my aunt would have been like really influential. My Sister aunt, Nola? my uncle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. Um, 
my aunt would have been very influential on me and like my sister, do you know what I mean? So like I've I've kind of grown up in their shadow if that makes sense. Like, do you know what I mean? I've always learned like have respect for everyone. Always say hello to everyone. Like don't be don't think you're bigger than you are. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you can be like I could have four million followers and I know myself I will not change because at the end of the day, strip all that back, strip all the followers back, strip the social media back, the money, whatever, all the accolades. You have when you are sitting with yourself on your own, that's who you truly are, do you know what I mean? And people will see that, do you know what I mean? I could strip it all of all of it back then. Who are you really? Do you know what I mean? Like and I, and if that was to happen, I know that I'm I'm the person that'll stop anyone, I'll help anyone out because it's, at the end of the day, like if you think you know everything, that's when you're in trouble. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I've always said that and I've always thought like don't get ahead of yourself, don't get over your, like in over your head. Like and there is a lot of people, especially in the online like creator economy. I do get in over the head, think that I better than everyone, and then a couple of months down the line, something happens, scandals yeah, yeah. or something come out, and then what are you left with? Yeah, I have always said like, when you're on your way up to the top, bring as many people as you can with you, because if anything happens and you're falling back down that fucking ladder, you need to go past the people that you fucking shit on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, it's all about being humble. I think I really do believe in being humble. I really like. Um, just me, like being humble. I just, I, I just never seen like, what's the point of not being humble? Do you know what I mean? I'm probably rambling on a bit, like a little bit. I'm still getting used to, to oh, obviously podcasts and all that kind of stuff. But like, there's just there's no need not to be humble and not to help people out. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Where did you grow up, Jay? Where? where so I grew up in Rossfield in uh, Jobstown. Yeah. Nice. So for anyone that knows, uh, Jobstown is a very, um, let's say, eventful area. <laughs> <laughs> good word. Uh, good word. Like that one. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. one. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very eventful area. Um, but listen, at the end of the day, I've always said it, like, them kinds of estates is where you meet the nicest people and the most down to earth people and the people that will help you out the most. The, yeah. you know, obviously, you have people that are just, some people are just different than others, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, they go different paths and all that kind of stuff. But, like, y- yeah. I feel like council estates especially is where you meet the nicest people. I actually heard an interesting stat about Jobstown. We were chatting to the people from the Ina the other day. And you might know, but I think it was... It was recent enough, I think it was in the last like five years or something, but Jobstown yeah. as an area had the highest, let's say, population or percentage of people who commit suicide yeah. out of every other area mm. in the country. So out of everywhere in the country, Jobstown had the highest concentration of suicides. <laughs> Grown up in the area and stuff like that, would you? Would that have been something that was present or you heard much of growing up? Or? Um, not in terms of like, not in terms of committing suicide and all that kind of stuff. Like obviously mental health wasn't like, as it was now, like yeah. it wasn't like it's non-existent, you know what I mean? Like, um, but no, I wouldn't have heard of that. Like me growing up, having jobs now, so where I was, like I was in kind of an all right path. So I was out like looking on the main street. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't really in the estate. Right. Yeah, but yeah. like it's madness. Like growing up, you know, you see like Rob Cash is going up on the field, born out, and they, like do you know what I mean? It's mad and like <laughs> it's it's crazy. But like that though, it's kind of I would kind of rather that. Like I'm happy that that happened because then yeah. you're saying like. Like, fuck this, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to stay here for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And that, mm-hmm. from very early on, that's, like, for me, like, seeing that kind of stuff and then seeing, obviously, people on corners and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's not worth it. Like, you do, yeah. you and all that kind of stuff. Listen, I couldn't give a fuck what anyone does. Um, Like, you you have your own, your own life. You can do whatever you want. But for me, like, I just didn't want to do that and I didn't want to, like, go down that kind of path. Do you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. I think there is a moment in time where, you, like, for everyone, I think, especially that lives, like, kind of around them areas and all that kind of stuff, there is a time where you do have a choice to make what patch are gonna go down and thankfully I made the right one and I think it was definitely down to down to the like the few people that had me circle at that time. Yeah. Um, the few people I looked up to and like listened to that did guide me in the right direction. So I'm I'm, I'm right. always grateful for that. Like John because yeah. I could have went one or two ways. And hopefully, thankfully it went the right way. Yeah. <laughs> we had a, a teacher in secondary school. I don't know if he ever said it to you. His name was Mr. Dull. And uh, cause we come from Bon Oak, which would be like a similar yeah, kind yeah. of area and he'd say, It's not where you live, it's how you live. Yeah. And uh, you touched on there about that comes like a moment in your life where it's kind of there's two paths in front of me and I have to decide which one I want to go down is there any like standout moment to you where mm-hmm. it was like you're at this point now where something's after happening or something's going to happen and I need to choose if I'm going to go on this path or the other one yeah like so I kind of bounced between my man and dad when I was younger so my dad would have lived over in uh, near Cabra in Drummalee right. so uh, basically you know that eventful area do you <laughs> know what I mean like that kind of the side of the city is, is probably it's a bit mad, like, do you know what I mean? It's crazy. And, like, growing up in them areas and, like, bouncing between the two of them, like, just seeing seeing the types of people that you would meet, like, seeing the events that would happen and just, 
it's just not mm-hmm. the one like for me i was like i just don't want to fucking do that like you know what i mean i want to like i used to always watch that youtube and i'd be looking at people like mtv cribs used to be a big thing for me oh yeah you know <laughs> i mean like watching mtv cribs like and all these big houses and these people showing you around the house and like like that's fucking mad like how do you get that like i've always looked at life like that. how do i get that how do i get to that do you know mm-hmm. what i mean and i think that very early on and then like stuff that obviously happened that i'm sure we'll touch on like for in the podcast like it's it's definitely shaped me like and being in them areas so early on and seeing all the mad fucking shit that happens in terms of like burned out cars fucking all the mad stuff do you know what i mean it, it definitely does shape and it does kind of like i say you can either choose to go down this path or the other path and i think obviously i chose to go down the right one but yeah, yeah. i don't think there's been a, a real like standout moment where i've kind of been like jesus like I need to fucking do something here, yeah. do you know what I mean? I think it was always, like I say, my man, dad struggles, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that we were, like, absolutely dead broke poor, like, we weren't. I still had clothes in my back, I still had a roof on my head, like, I'm grateful for that, but mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. it was hard at times, and I kind of said, I just don't want them, I don't want them troubles and struggles when I grow up, do you know what I mean? I don't want that for myself, so I wanted to make a change. So I think that would have been the main kind of driver for me, getting yeah. myself out there and trying to, do as much I can to improve myself, do you know what I mean? hundred percent, yeah. So it wasn't like one big event. It was like just the accumulation of being in these areas in this environment. Yeah, like, like I think it's, it's yeah, it's just a, being in the environment. I just didn't like the environment I was yeah. in. And I seen like that, like you had the likes of influential programs for me anyway, like the MTV Cribs, you had people talking about like business and all that kind of stuff. I used to love business. Yeah. Days, like, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs and like a lot of successful like CEOs and all that kind of stuff have always had that passion for a, for a, a business you know, a passion for business at an early age and I always tried yeah. to make money and uh, like in school and all I used to sell pens and copies and all like, oh, yeah. I, mean, yeah, <laughs> like I was always trying to like get something because them selling them pens and copies like by helping me like say sometimes buy lunch do you know what I mean like mm-hmm. little things like that so like it's yeah like I think the money the money struggles as like was definitely my main driver do you know what I mean yeah that makes um, sense so yeah you, you mentioned something interesting so you're a man that you went back and forth between those two but you mentioned your auntie had a big impact on you and she was a real like yeah. inspirational figure two two part questions I suppose one why was it your auntie you think that had such a big impact as opposed to a mother or father let's say and then yeah. what was the impact that she had on you ah uh, like fucking my aunt like my auntie was just so influential to me my sisters like like just it, things happened when we were younger we had to move with my auntie yeah. and um we had to move there. I think we moved there for about two years. Me and my sister, and my other two sisters then as well. They kind of bounced between their like their nanny and granddads and then my aunties. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was tough. Like it's it was very fucking tough. Like being totally honest. Like and especially like for people that do have like a man dad that has broken up or separated. Like it is quite tough. Like going from house to house. Like you feel like you're never you're never home. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Now we're and it, I still feel like that now. Like I live with Michaela. I'm living with Michaela nearly four years, and I still don't feel like it's home. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I, I think I'll always feel like that for the rest of my life. But, like, it's not a bad thing, do you know what I mean? Like, but that's just obviously the the repercussions of what I have faced, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With my man that's splitting up, I felt like I'm always bouncing around, I'm always moving around. I was either in my mask, yeah. my aunties, my aunties, my other aunties, do you know what I mean? I felt like I was never in a place, one place for long. Um, but, like, when we moved in with my auntie, like, it definitely, I learned so much, do you know what I mean? Like, her and my uncle, um, I just, like, I would say my, my auntie was more of a mat to me than anything do you know what I mean like she like I will always say that she was my ma and that she brought me up do you know what I mean um, yeah. or and my uncle I don't want to take away my uncle yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Snap him, watch this. Like, what are you fucking talking about <laughs> um, but now like they were so influential like she was just such a fucking good person do you know what I mean um, just the, the teachings like that making sure that you're always kind of you're always dressed well you're always prim and proper going to school you never look like you're, like you're in bits or anything yeah. like that do you know what I mean you've always had a shower you're always clean Um. And just like even about money and all that kind of stuff, you always have to make sure that you you put money in the right places. You're not spending stupid money on stupid things. Mm-hmm. Um, just like just trying to like teaching it to be an all round nice person, and I always have time for everyone, and I always try and help everyone out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like she was like the biggest influence on my life. Um, personally, growing up around my uncle, and I can't like I can never thank them enough for that. Do you know what I mean? Because if they didn't take us in. Who knows where me, yeah. sister, me and my sisters could have went, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to even fucking think about where it could have went, knows, but yeah. I could have went down a totally different path then, do you know what I mean? It's just spoiled off, like, it's just, it's madness, but, time. you know, she passed away um, a couple of years later then, she died of cancer, so obviously that was my first big kind of fucking, that was my first big, like, you know, tragedy yeah. for me, because it was someone that I looked up to as a ma, I think it was a little bit harder because it was prolonged we knew it was happening yeah. and then it was just kind of she was deteriorating 
like deteriorating over yeah, the years yeah. and eventually then it did happen but it was in a way it was kind of nice the way she did go i was around all of our family all of our loved ones and mm-hmm. um, in a lovely hospice in st mary's in rat is it uh, yeah. what's the fucking place not rat uh there's a hospice in what's that fucking place called beside the canals what? If it's outside of Clendalk and we don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Somewhere around. That's going to come back to me. I'll text you later on. That was that place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we give them a shout out when we. Yeah, no way. Like, do you know what? Like, yeah. yeah, she was looked after. Like, But at the end of the day, it's, it took a huge impact on me, especially earlier on, because I was only like, I think I was only like 15 or 16 at the time. So okay. I mean, yeah. Um, I had met Michaela a couple of years and. Like, I'm so happy she was there as well. Like, she's been fucking through the mill, but that's another story yeah, yeah, for further down the we podcast. We get her into yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, I, was like, <laughs> I was just fucking better for this. Like, you better talk about me all nice today. Yeah. Like, I was like, yeah, we'll see. Do you know, actually, I mean, just mentioned to Michaela, because I always wondered, is your name Jamie or Jason? And then I was going through your Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the video of you going through the car wash. Oh, and yeah. And she goes, Jamie! Okay. His name's Jamie. Yeah, yeah, like, figure that yeah. Out. The amount of people that don't actually know my name is Jamie, like, <laughs> like everyone, my name is Jamie. <laughs> Jamie Kavner for anyone that like there you go there's the big secret uh, but yeah no you'll have to fucking, punch your beer tooth now for proof that's yeah, what yeah. fucking uh, like I did be going to events and all and everyone's like oh what's happening Jay? I was like ah oh, yeah and then Michaela would call me Jamie like who's Jamie the fuck is <laughs> Jamie <laughs> like, and uh, yeah like it's mad I, I genuinely didn't, didn't think that people yeah. thought I thought like I didn't think Jay was like a, a beer tooth now what the fuck's calling that child J? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a nickname. Just like, one letter. Just like, J. Homer, yeah, yeah. Homer J Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> That's madness, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, now, yeah, like, she was, like, the two of them are big, huge influence on my life. And mm. they have, they really did shape me yeah, to yeah. what I am now. But, like, you're saying, like, damn true me. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Well, you mentioned about your sisters as well. What are, Do you have older sisters or younger sisters? Or what's no, I have, uh, I have, fuck, I had three <laughs> younger sisters. I don't know what I was going to say for there. Um, yeah, so now I have three younger sisters. So one is obviously Kerry, she's the oldest one out of us. She's 19. Um, she's 19. And that's like, it's madness seeing this is that growing up. Like, yeah, yeah. And, like it's fucking, it's crazy. <laughs> um, but then I have me two other little sisters, then they're uh, 10 and 11. We can edit it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I actually don't know. I think they're 10 and 11. I mean, the one's in 14, one's in 6th class, so that's what, 10 and 11? Yeah, yeah. 11, 12? Uh, 12, yeah, 14, yeah, 12, 14, yeah, 12, 14, yeah, 12, 14 yeah, somewhere yeah, in there. Somewhere there. Close enough. <laughs> so you're the only boy, three. I'm sisters, the only boy, then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I'm the only boy. Um, so yeah, I was the only boy of three sisters. Uh, I was the big brother, as they say. But nice. yeah, no, I've always been overprotective of my sisters. Oh, yeah. um, not even in the sense like, oh, any fella fucking goes there, don't go yeah, kill him. Like, yeah. Not even that. Like, just, I always want them to. I don't want them to see or go through the things that I have gone through. That's why I've always said. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've tried my best to fucking try and do that. Like, at the end of the day, I've said this all the time. Like, I'm not, I don't try and be that dad. I'm the big brother. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I'm always trying to lead them down the right path because, do you know what I mean? Like, it, it can be hard to look at, like, say, a father figure and all that kind of stuff and, and mm-hmm. see, like, am I actually doing the right thing? And it's good with that you have someone in your life that is it's kind of currently the only thing do you know what i mean if that makes sense yeah yeah um that you have someone to kind of look up to and like this is the right way of doing things don't do this do that do you know what i mean is that something that like are you always conscious of the fact that you have little sisters looking up to you and watching what you're doing no not really um not really like uh, michaela only actually asked me that the other day like we were talking about like social media and how it's like how crazy it's gone for me like and and the influence that i've kind of had on people but see i don't Mm. see that like i just I'm just kind of doing me and Michaela said like like you don't know how many people you're actually helping do you know what I mean like there's so much more to your social media than you think like every day like you're helping people like I know I'm just mad like but like when I when I do obviously the vlogs or whatever I do the, like washing the face washing yeah. the teeth <laughs> someone texted me the other day and said like but you doing that is help me get up in the morning so I've always said like I couldn't give a fuck what anyone has to say on my comment section. Now, I'm actually lucky in a sense where my comments, my comment section isn't even that bad. Oh, someone yeah. just said the other day, I did a fashion video, I was saying, oh, a bit of scary, and one go with this on the wall. I was like, <laughs> yeah. the fuck kind of comment is that? But like, yeah, that's, that's the, the only problem. That's, that's the height of the bad comments I get. Like, and I'm fucking delighted. Like, um, but like, it's madness that, like, something so simple as washing your face, washing your fucking teeth, is helping people get up in the morning and actually do that and look after themselves. Like, even with the skincare and all that kind of stuff, there's so many, like, so many fellas that, won't talk about skincare, which I think is my name. Obviously, my fucking skin is in bits at the moment, so no one fucking <laughs> um, I, I, I've been stressed a lot. You didn't want to say, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I had a shave and all, I think it's going to just help me out when it did. Um, but you're like, even though, like some men's skincare, like not many people talk about it. And, like, yeah, I don't yeah. think, like, 
I don't see what the big deal is about putting you in a bit of skincare. Yeah. What? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, it's I madness. Agree, yeah. <laughs> you have to look after yourself. Like, uh, at the end of the day, you're your biggest asset. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you need to be looking after yourself. You need to be taking care of your skin. You need to be, like, getting, like, regularly haircuts or whatever you need to do. Do you know what I mean? Just looking after yourself and maintaining yourself. Yeah. Like, going to the gym is a big thing as well. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, if you're, in, I've always said, for me, anyway, like, I've seen this now. I've, I've heard the quote so many times, but, like, you get your physical right, you get your mental right, then everything else follows suit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, and for me, over the last kind of week, few weeks of being in the gym consistently, that has been my physical getting right, and I can feel my mental getting right then, and everything else is just kind of falling into place. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's fucking great. Like the gym is like I never, I always used to love running, but I never knew the gym like the impact it have on your mental and your physical. Like it's just crazy. Awesome. Like you and all that yourself, like better than probably anyone. But like it's it's madness. Oh, massively. Actually, I wanted to change gears a little bit because. You, how long have you been with Michaela now? I'm sorry if I try you under the bus putting putting years on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I've I've been with Michaela. Jesus Christ, me and Michaela met when we were twelve. Yeah, twelve. Yeah, we met when we were twelve. So we were friends for like a year and a bit. Met on a, a mobile site in Wexford. Uh, oh, right, I yeah, so on your mobile, proper, like Bebo or something. Yeah, <laughs> proper like you know great story I, there's yeah, actually yeah. a funny story about behind me there's a funny story how i actually met michaela right so right, go on. she'll love this you'll love this <laughs> so i used to love meanies remember meanies yeah yeah, yeah. Meanies. absolute legendary bag of crisps <laughs> and uh, she hated them and obviously i kind of knew of michaela i had friends on my like on the mobile so yeah, and yeah she was kind of friends with a couple of them so we kind of had mutual friends or whatever and we were, used to all hang around but michaela was in like so where the mobile says there's a shop and then there's a pack so i was in like a bag of meanies but i used to always call out from michaela like saying oh when are we getting a kiss and all like you know what i mean like used to share yeah, with yeah. a fuck like um and this is back when like if you can picture it like i had fucking justin bieber here like i had the hair going yeah, down there yeah yeah, yeah. The flicks and all like oh jesus Look, uh, that, that yeah, i, I think all them phones have been deleted like you know what yeah. I mean? anyone can find them on the internet please do send me because i've fucking i've tried very hard to erase that from the internet um but yeah so i called over like and then eventually she came over or whatever and uh she was like, I'm not fucking kissing you, them fucking Mikey Oaks. And, uh, I was like, what you mean? Like, she was like, get a chewing gum because I'm not kissing you. And, uh, oh, you want to see me? I was like frantic going, like, anyone got a chewing gum? Anyone got a chewing gum? And uh, eventually I got a chewing gum. Eventually my breath smelled nice. So then uh, that's how we kind of first met. And then from that, we were friends for like uh, around a year. And then eventually just got together. And here we are now in 2023. So about just over 10 years. Yeah, nice. We've grown too up. Long. In, yeah, too long. <laughs> grown up, obviously, your mom and dad were separated. Did that you know, consciously or subconsciously give you a, an outlook on relationships that you yeah. think is played through into, obviously now you're in a long-term relationship. Yeah, 100%. Like, it, like don't, don't get me wrong, like a relationship is by no means easy. Yeah. Um, it's really not. And I think, like when it gets hard, I've always kind of learned, I'm saying that like when it gets hard, that's it, then it's done. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I've kind of learned, like Michael has helped me see that because like the difference in, say, upbringings, the difference in, like, family, like, she would be really close with her family. Like, yeah. I mean, like, that, like, it's madness how close they are. They all live kind of around each other. Like, they're all, like, every Halloween, every Christmas. And now, we do that as well. My family do that. But, like, it's different. It's not the same. Like, do you know what I mean? It's more so about just to see everyone say hello. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. like, she's really close with her whole family. And, like, the relationship that, like, say, her man and I would have their married years and years. That, like, me and Michaela, they met when they were young and mm -hmm. have stayed together ever since. Like, it's amazing. Like, um, but now it, it definitely did see it opened my eyes. My sorry, I'll start that again. Yeah, it opened my eyes anyway to like relationships and how relationships should really be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, yeah, like it definitely it's it's changed me for the positive. Obviously, like um, because I'm where I so long. But yeah, like I don't I don't know if me and Michaela didn't me like I'm always looking at things like I'm really into that. Like you know, thinking about like in hindsight or like yeah. you know like what could have happened or what would have happened if this didn't happen do you know what i mean and looking into it like that and like if i didn't meet michaela yeah, you'd god, like god knows <laughs> yeah. where i'd be like being totally honest like she is the, like I'll, we'll get into that more later but like she has actually helped me so much you know what i mean like in terms of like learning about relationships learning about myself like in terms of what i can actually achieve do you know what i mean and I, i'm so like that so blessed to have someone like that in my life 100 percent, man it's beautiful it, yeah and it's rare nowadays, especially like you would see yeah. someone being together from that young. <laughs> yeah. We use a kind of relationship because you see a lot with younger ones where it's like on, sort of on and off every other week. We use like that. We've <laughs> been together consistently throughout the whole time. At the start, like you obviously like we're so young, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't it like me and her, like we were on and off for a bit, like but we were so young. 
Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm putting it down to. Like, you don't fucking even know yourself at that age. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, like, whatever about being in a relationship, trying to learn about everyone else, like someone else in their kind of like their whole thing around their life and all. Like, it, it, how the fuck can you do that at 13, 14 oh. years old? Like, we ran off for a bit, but we'd never, we'd never stay away from each other for long, yeah. if that makes sense. I think we always, we've always said this and uh, we'll continue to say, we always found our way back to each other, no matter what. So, Fucking steal the bears telling someone or something. Yeah. You know I mean? something can't get, like can't that. get away from her. <laughs> <laughs> she, she can't get away from me. Yeah. Man. I, 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 I was good. <laughs> no, it's nice. And you see, like you see your relationship little bits of it on social media, and yeah. you still seem to like have a genuine connection with each other. Yeah, and, like it's not a you see a lot of fake stuff as well. Yeah. It doesn't seem fake in any way. Yeah, like especially with the likes of social media nowadays. If anything, relationships have been like put on the fucking like on mm. the back burner for yeah, everyone yeah. do you know what I mean like it's 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 crazy and it, do, you wanna, do you know what I think it is about social media and relationships nowadays this Stephen Mattler has a brilliant fucking quote about this uh, social media teaches that or maybe I should be doing something else with someone else in somewhere else like yeah, do you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. And I, I think it boils down to like um, like there's so much say say how do I say it there's so much things out there there's so much say opportunity out there there's so many things that yeah. can veer you off like a relationship and all that kind of stuff and it's madness like and at the end of the day you, you just have to fucking sit down and say do you really love this person do you really want to be with this person and if you don't then you need to just like you need to cut toys then instead of yeah. having it dragged out you know what i mean and um, but yeah no i think social media has definitely had a I don't know. Like it, it has a positive and a negative effect on relationships in my opinion. Um obviously I have positive and negative and everything, but I think the negative is really bad, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it can absolutely absolutely wreck relationships, absolutely wreck friendships, everything. Like do you know what I mean? Like yeah. social media can be such a dangerous place. Um it's madness, like yeah, but I think social media has definitely taken a, a both positive and negative relationship. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know? I think like a hundred percent. I'm not sure on relationships whether it's been overall a net positive or a net negative. Yeah. Or relationships in general Like there's m many positives Even from your yeah. Growing up You know social media Or whatever Gave you access to stuff Like MTV Cribs You know you get yeah. to see Bigger things that yeah. you can Go on to achieve But on the flip side Especially with relationships Like if you're having a bad day Or the missus pisses you off Or something yeah. You know it's like One scroll of the phone And you have access to yeah. Any woman Any race any <laughs> Like yeah. anything that you want So And having that optionality Especially at a young age When you're immature You probably don't have Great impulse control You yeah. probably always do think Oh what if the grass is green Or somewhere else Yeah like the options are there literally a click of a button away 100% man like you've hit the nail on the head there that's why I was kind of trying to articulate there by saying it like there's so much option out there do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean like, and, like you say like you have a fight with the missus and all then you're kind of like like not me anyway but like yeah, you yeah. could be like like a second guess in this relationship mm. and all kinds of stuff and that. like should I really be doing this like there's so many mm. people out there that I could potentially be with but it's like that bar like Stephen Bartlett like, quote it's like that Stephen Bartlett like, quote goes like do you know what I mean like it's somewhere else with someone else doing yeah, something yeah. else do you know what i mean like and it's it's so so true but yeah like it's it's madness yeah. how have you have you and Mi michaela ever like sat down and discussed like obviously you've gotten a lot more popular over the years with mm. bigger following and yeah. stuff has that mm. affected your relationship and do you just communicate about that or what way has that gone um no not really like obviously like my socials have gone quite well or whatever and like yeah it has like really improved in the last kind of couple of years or whatever but no I don't think it's affected I don't think it's affected my relationship anyway and I think Michaela like be be with me on that one like saying I don't think it has affected if anything it's made a relationship stronger being totally honest um it's just it, I've learned more about Michaela through social media do you know what I mean like yeah. and how she does things like um like even with her own content do you know what I mean like it's really good so my, like I love my relationships you know what I mean it's madness like I know that sounds really soppy and all but like oh, we're so nice. similar do you know what I mean like she does content creation she does social media as well and she's flying as well do you know what I mean and we're both always kind of you know helping each other get to that next level next level next level it's just it's so good and it's so fulfilling having your relationship that ties in with your career and what you want to do do you know what I mean and not a lot of people can say like that mm -hmm. normally like mm -hmm. Sometimes relationships, the two people are the polar opposites. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And it's I'm just in such a such a good position and such a grateful position that I am. I have a I have a missus that is just exactly like me. She's the as Drake says, she's the female version of me. So, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. That's nice, man. With growing up, then I know one of the podcasts you were. I think it might have been the Peer Pod. He was asking you. Shout out to Sam from Peer Pod, by the way. Nice one. But um, I think he was asking you at the start, like, how do you like being described? Is it a creator? Is it an influencer? Whatever else. You said entrepreneur is a word that you like to use to be associated with yourself. And doing a bit of research on you in your background, I know you got involved in entrepreneurship early days, selling pens yeah. and copies and all that crack and some other stuff. Before we get into all that stuff, was there any 
role models or people you looked up to as you were growing up that were giving you that push down that direction as opposed to the lads on the corner doing other stuff? Um, yeah, like growing up for me, it would have been like, early on it would have been like the likes of you have your Rob Lipsits and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like you have them type of people on YouTube and then you have like in-person people that would have me and my uncle. Um, like my dad as well. Like, do you know what I mean? But yeah, like I don't think, I don't think there was really, it's mad. Like normally people would say like at a very early age, like they had these people like I'd look up to like obviously you have every, every other kid like wants to be a footballer and yeah, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. like that kind of that was my original like kind of that goal was plan I a, to, was it? yeah a like I wanted to be a footballer because my dad was a footballer his dad was a footballer like and played at really high levels so obviously that's what I wanted to do as everyone could see that didn't fucking happen <laughs> um, <laughs> but now like it you did yeah, get to play in the the, the charity match, the charity match, the match yeah. man, like, do you know what I mean like <laughs> sign up like fuck scouts sake. be watching that I tell you um, <laughs> but yeah now it's yeah, it's mad. Like, I didn't really have, like, one person I really, really looked up to. Like, I think it was more so later on, like, when I was about maybe, maybe, what, 15, 16? Like, t- around, t- like, my te- early teenager years up until mm-hmm. now was when I kind of really started looking up to people. Okay. So, like, obviously, that time, like, that time period, the people I were looking up to were, like, the likes of Grant Cardone, you have, like, all your kind of big real estate investors, you have, like, I like I look up to like of Steve Jobs, like how innovative he is, like and how he's built Apple from what it is, or from what it was to what yeah. it is now. Do you know what I mean? A conglomerate company that sells absolutely huge, my, like mega numbers. And um, you have the likes of then, like the likes of Rob Lipset. I've fo- kind of followed him all the way up since I was a kid. Like and to be like someone that I would call an acquaintance now is just it's madness to say that. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then like kind of like say in the last couple of years, like I have the likes of my friends like. Like Adam Power, you have Adam Power, he's a very big marketer, he's really, really good at what he does, really yeah. touches in like with the likes of mindset and all that kind of stuff. And I think over the last two years, I've started to really go down the route of being like a deep thinker and all that kind of stuff. Really kind of like I really like my philosophy now. Um I'm really into it. I don't know what it is. Like and now I'd look up to people like the likes of um Modern Wisdom, like he has a podcast, Chris Williamson, uh Stephen Bartlett, you'd look up to like all these kind of big influential people, like you have Tim Ferris, I'd look mm-hmm. up to um who was another one? Is a what's his name? What's his name? You have like the likes of Tony Robinson, like all them yeah, kind of people. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Tony Robinson, all them people that kind of tie into that. Um, and I'm very lucky that I've been blessed with influential people that I can actually have a conversation with, and I can text like if I'm ha- if, like if I'm unsure about something or if I'm stuck about something. And I think I've gotten to that place because I've put myself in them realms. Yeah, like it doesn't come easy. You don't mm. meet these people by just dropping them a message on social media. Like last year. I was like, it's madness how how quickly my social media has changed. Like, like last year I had a marketing agency for anyone that doesn't know. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like last year, two years ago, and I kind of built that up. That's how I met, say, the likes of Adam Power, all the other people that I know in the marketing space, and that's why I've kind of I've taken what I know from that and brought it over to where I am now from yeah. my own personal brand. Um, but like without learning any of that, without investing in the courses, without meeting these people, like last year, like I said, I was over in London, I think 10 times. So just marketing purposes, going to events, going to networking events, meeting people, learning. Because London is a whole different ball game to Ireland. Like I listen, like I sat in a room one time and it was like a property, property investor event. And like they're all talking about how much they've made and all. And they're trying to fucking mad oh, numbers. Like I made like a couple of mil, like just on commission. I'm like, what? And at that time, I'm a tour year apprentice, like, I'm earning fucking <laughs> yeah. 400 quid a week and these people are talking about earning millions of quid. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, one deal, yeah. But you can either look at that and you can be spoiled and say, oh yeah, well, they only got this because of this, this and this. Yeah. But for me, I looked at it like, that's what's possible. That is what's out there and that's what's achievable and mm-hmm. that's eventually what I want to achieve. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously money isn't the be all and end all, but like, it definitely is a factor for me because of obviously early age. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and people could say, oh, money isn't everything, but like, that's your opinion. For me, it's a lot of what I want to do. And I know that can be quite, it can be quite toxic sometimes, do you know what I mean? Like struggling like with money and all that kind of stuff. And do you know, like having, like I'd go to the shop and I'd buy like a hundred euro pair, or 200 euro pair of runners or whatever. And I'd have buyers remorse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I hate that. And that's obviously, been, like that's just the way I was brought up as a kid. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? And like, I don't like that. And I hate, I kind of would be really sometimes scarce about sending money. Ah, oh, sending money. Spend the so money, I'd be yeah. really sometimes about like scarce about spending money. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I'm starting to come out of that now, yeah, yeah, thankfully, good. and like that, I've I've been helped along and I've been guided along by the right people, and I'm starting to come out of that. Like even yeah. by meeting the people I've met over the last couple of years that have been really influential with me, and like in terms of money and business and all the entrepreneurship as a whole, um, it's mm-hmm. definitely helped me leaps and bounds. Uh, you're in good company, man. I think mainly about resonate a lot with that. Similar, we didn't grow up in 
like poverty situations yeah. or anything. Always had food, but money was like the center of every conversation growing yeah. up that you hear. It's like no decision gets made without checking the bank account yeah. or without money coming into yeah. the equation. And it's not that you want to grow up and just have all the money in the world, but you want to have enough where like money isn't an issue anymore, you know, yeah. and you can live your life without having to worry about that stuff. And I think sometimes the desire to want money or to even pursue that as a goal gets like kind of bastardized a little bit, you know, you almost, people look down and say, ah, oh, you know, it's not all about the money. It's yeah. not about this. It's not about that sort of stuff. And I know they say money doesn't make you happy and I'm sure it doesn't, but like Shopping the, the, the lack of money place. will make you yeah. unhappy. I'm sure you know that way. And having that as, you know, you mentioned the sort of scarcity mindset around money and feeling that guilt of spending yeah. more than X amount on a pair of shoes or whatever. Like that's what me and Lebo have conversations with yeah. on the regular doing things. So appreciate you sharing that and yeah, man, coming through it. And I'm sure a lot of people are in the same boat as ourselves, you know what I mean? Like, and they are in that scarcity mindset and then get instant boyers remorse of spending fucking, like, sometimes, mm -hmm. like, when I was younger, like, it, that's what I'm saying, like, even growing up, like, having, like, three or whatever for lunch, like, do you know what I mean? Like, like in the dream, yeah, you're it's like, like, like six acid rolls, do you know what I mean? Drink like, it's, it's madness, <laughs> but then, like, you're like, oh, fuck, it's gone now, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, what else am I going to buy for the rest of the day? Like, yeah. and I think, for me, anyway, like, it's definitely shaped me into why I want to chase things, like, and why I am a little bit money-driven. Like, and I, like I'll say that openly, like, I am money-driven because at the end of the day, I didn't have that growing up. Mm -hmm. I, like, I didn't have loads of money, but like that, we went, like, you us went in poverty, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think it's definitely saying that, like, it is a factor in, in what I'm trying to do. Um, and I do want to eventually get to a stage where, like, this is mad, and I was having a conversation about this with Michaela the other day about this, and... Like, I want to make as much money that my kids' kids... Like, I'm thinking about my kids' kids. I don't even have fucking kids, and I'm thinking about <laughs> my kids' kids. That's the kind of wealth that I want to generate. Like, I yeah. want... I don't want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. Do you know what I mean? I want to have wealth that stretches over generations. The McGregor and money. <laughs> that's, that's what it is, though. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I eventually want to get to that stage, and I think not a lot of people are, are like that. Do you know what I mean? I think everyone has a five-second plan, not a five-year plan. Especially with social media. Like, everyone wants it instantly. Everyone wants it, like, tomorrow. It wants it. it doesn't happen in a couple of weeks, then it's just not going to work. But at the end of the day, these things take time. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. who the fuck that is? <laughs> You're all good. I hate that number. Do you know that... It's like a number that you've never seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Could be the, the mini sponsorship coming in there. Imagine. <laughs> they must have fucking... Yeah, there was someone there. Show, yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Sorry, what were you? You're talking about money and then obviously the pursuit of that growing up. And uh, I think one thing that... I think it's a Bible quote, actually, is it where they say money is the root of evil? Or something like that. It's oh, like money a is the misinterpretation. And then like that, yeah. the real translation is like it's the love of money that is the root of all evil or something. So yeah. it's not money that's the issue. It's the relationship that you have with the money that can obviously cause people to go down bad paths with it, let's say, and do negative things. But you were saying like you want to earn an amount so that you can set yourself, your kids, and your kids' kids up to a point where you don't want to necessarily set them up so that they can just go off and you know mess up their lives but so yeah. that they have options they can make decisions yeah. and go and pursue things that they actually want to do in life 100%. and that has money as a limiting factor in that yeah no 100 percent. like you've hit the nail there on the head again like i want to i want to be in a position where i can be as comfortable as i want i can do what i like the way i have said it and this is the way i've said it when i was younger all the way up until now i want to be able to do whatever i want wherever I want, with whoever I want. Mm -hmm. No toys, no strings attached. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want to have the money that I can go. If I want to go to fucking France tomorrow, I'll go to France tomorrow. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, something like that. I want to live life on my own terms. And that's eventually what I want to get to. And I know that, like, a few people are in that same position, that that's what they want to do. Like, and the people that I've met, like, in the business space, in the entrepreneur space, that's exactly where they want to get yeah. to. I want to, have, I want to have time freedom, money freedom, and just location freedom. That's the three simple L's. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so with entrepreneurship then, what was your first uh, moving away from the copies and pens on the schoolyard? What was your first kind of adventure into the Jesus entrepreneur Christ. space? I had so many for fuck's sake. <laughs> um, I've had so many early, like I'm only 23 and I feel like I fucking have laid loads of businesses behind oh, yeah. me. Like, you know what I mean? uh, so I used to obviously, like I said, like on schoolyard selling copies, pens, all that kind of stuff. And then I've always kind of tried to make money. Like I started working from an early age. Do you know what I mean? I worked at my granddad's locksmiths when I was like 14, 15. Mm -hmm. And worked there for a few years. Then I was working two jobs. Then I was working in Grandad's locksmiths. Then I was working in the tree arena doing all the concerts. Okay, yeah. Um, scanning tickets and all that kind of stuff. So I had two jobs at fucking 16, <laughs> 17, do you know what I mean? Um, then I left them two jobs. Then I went to work in, went to work in JD nice. um, in the square. 
Jay Day is a oh, very yeah, it's a mad experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like it's it's crazy. Like it's it's madness. I think uh, when I was growing up, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to work at Jay Day. I've always wanted to work at Jay Day, yeah. and I think a lot of people in my age around that kind of like age back. Yeah, like, it was a popular yeah, spot. Yeah, Jay is the it? place yeah. to work. Like do you know what I mean, and uh, like worked there for a, I think I worked there for a, a year and a half, and then I went to work with um, Michaela's job. Uh, so me and Michaela actually worked together, um, and then after I left that, I went and I started my friendship. So that's where, like, the my work life of how I've like kind of transitioned from yeah. like early on up until now. That's like, in terms of that, I was always trying to make money. So like entrepreneurial, like being entrepreneurial and trying to make money and trying to do stuff on the side. And then when obviously the the pandemic hit in two thousand and twenty, I think it was two thousand nineteen, two thousand twenty, somewhere like that. Yeah, I don't, I can't even remember. It's actually a funny story about that. Actually, so me and Michaela were um, we were in Rome when yes. we first heard about it. When it was first time that like first trying like kind of coming out in the media mainstream media, mm -hmm. we were in Rome, we were having a great time. Like do you know what I mean? It was great, happy days. But like we went into the airport and they flew into Rome, went into the airport, and that's when they kind of first start putting in the screens and you know like the screening people and all stuff. Like what the fuck is that? Like do you know what I mean? Because you'd never seen that before. Like I I would have never seen it. She would have mm -hmm. never seen it in our lives. And they uh, were like that's a bit strange. Didn't think anything of it. We heard there was a few cases, but thought it was like a, a no flu. major. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like nothing. And then uh, obviously went went around whatever had a holiday came home, and then what was it two weeks later the whole everywhere was closed off, two weeks later madness like uh, then for the next two years then yeah it was just sitting yeah, no, doing nothing, yeah. um, but for me, but uh, sorry I was sitting doing nothing for a lot of people for me that's when I kind of that's when I really kind of transitioned into my entrepreneurship journey like so I started a clothing brand in 2019 called the Lab, so the Lab was like it was very successful okay and um, really successful like especially in the height of a pandemic you don't think like starting a business is probably the fucking worst thing you could do but <laughs> for us like i think we were known almost everywhere in was it world. selling your own clothes or were you getting in like yeah so basically stuff we would this. do our own designs and all that kind of stuff and then we would also now we actually started for our first job we so, like sourced in ireland it was okay. too expensive so we went elsewhere then um so we outsourced them but from that we've always said that we wanted to have the, the highest quality possible at the kind of lowest that we could charge that was our kind of edge out for everyone yeah yeah um so yeah we, like we did quite well with that Um, like i say we were kind of known everywhere and that's when i kind of started really putting my marketing and what i had learned previous years in, into that mm -hmm. and that's where i learned most of my marketing like and yeah what i know now through that like we did influencer marketing we didn't pay one influencer really none and we were not like we, like there was fucking thousands of people on the on the website at one time. Do you know what I mean? Like on Shopify, anyone that knows Shopify, you can uh, you can see how many people are live on the website, and like there was hundreds of people on it at one time. Like every time we do a drop, like and that came down to obviously the marketing side of it, like send them out to influencers. But people, influencers, like they weren't they weren't like I'm not posting that because we had such a good story behind us. We had a story and we were on a journey and people wanted to buy into the journey. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and then the likes of the influencers we sent that stuff out to just believed in us and believed in the journey and yeah. like respected us because we were so young that we were grafting like that in the middle yeah, of a pandemic yeah, yeah. when money wasn't really circulating a lot. Well, money was circulating. Do you know what I mean? Just but not to. <laughs> just not. Like it, it was circulating. Like, what's it? The fucking, I think there was a thing that came out that the Fed fucking printed oh, more money man, than they yeah. ever did during the during the pandemic but that's a fucking other topic for another day but um <laughs> yeah like uh, obviously like we we were just did so well and then it was mad like the first kind of mad moment for me was we were going out when we were doing our shopping and i seen people wearing hoodies and all and i was oh, like that's real. my brand like that like i did one one of my mates as well like so we were like texting each other all the time every time we'd see mm. someone wearing it and like it was madness like even the likes of doing like a photo, our first photo shoot and all like in a studio it was just all them kind of mad things that happened like definitely shaped me to what i am now and then obviously we closed down the lab in 2020 um, okay. just just two of us went two different paths you know what i mean i think i was more say business and marketing focused and we just had creative differences and like there was no bad blood or anything it was just people just grow apart do you yeah. know what i mean the business that's what happens in businesses sometimes that's the that can be one of the cons of partnering with someone do you know mm -hmm. what i mean um mm -hmm. and if that's just what happened for us but like i'm so grateful for that i'm so grateful for that journey because like it taught me a lot about myself it taught me a lot about what true graft actually is true graft for me was like packing orders at one o'clock in the morning out Michaela's back garden do you know what I mean yeah, on the table yeah, yeah. I actually think I have a video somewhere and if this goes up like I'll, I'll post a video like on top of it of me actually packing saying like one day do you know what I mean like I'm packing an order at one o'clock in the morning in the freezing fucking cold out the back garden on the table because yeah, I didn't yeah. want to wake anyone up so, and like that's for me that's true graft do you know what I mean like it's it's what you can do it's what you do when no one is watching. Mm -hmm. It's really what you're really about. Do you know what I mean? Like I was listening to a podcast the other day, um, Modern Wisdom podcast with 
um, I think it was a, it was with Stephen Bartlett. Yeah. And uh, it's like he, Chris was saying, like it's what you do when no one is watching. Anyone can like anyone can recycle rubbish when people are around. But what are you doing when no are you recycling it, that when yeah. no one's around? Do you know what I mean? I know that's a, a bit of a mad analogy to kind of imagine. But when you think about it, like you can do all this work, you can put out that you're doing all this work on social media and all that kind of stuff. But when no one is watching, are you really mm-hmm. doing that? Are you cheating yourself by putting it out, t- saying that you're doing the thing, but you're not really doing the thing when yeah, no one is yeah, watching? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Hundred um, percent. I think that's a really big, a good way to look at things as well. Like do you know what I mean? Like and I think I've taken that on board as well. Like like I'm doing this when no one is watching. Yeah. So. Big time. It reminds me because we all come from a football background. Yeah. You know when you're doing like sprints and the manager has cones laid out. Uh, it's like you'll see all the lads. So it's sprints. Yeah, and you'll oh, see gosh. all the lads who like run and then they'll stop like a few yards in front of the cone and turn around and come back. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, and then when the manager's yeah. looking, they'll all run straight yeah. to the cone and back. It's like who's actually putting the yards in when nobody's looking? Love that. When you get out onto yeah. a pitch, that's when it's gonna show. Yeah, I love that. That's that's a fucking brilliant example. That yeah. is like that's hit the nail again on the head. Like it's, it's that little small thing. And that's the thing that I love. I love, I over obsess about the small things. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like, you have to remember, but you just simply obsessing over the small things. You can beat so many people. Oh yeah. So many people overlook the small things, always look for shortcuts like that. When we bring it back to social media, like everyone wants it instantly. Everyone wants it overnight. If you can just stick out, be consistent, stay in your lane, mind your business, post your content, do whatever you're doing, even in business, just keep walking and walking and yeah. walking. Eventually, the competition dies off and there you are, you've made it. You know I mean? Yep, yep. Stay born and brightest the longest. <laughs> you yeah. have to. It's all about fucking, yeah, like consistency. Like it's consistency, I'm sure we'll talk about it again. Like, but consistency is just, it's the main factor, man. Big time. Especially all the names you've dropped, like Stephen Barrett, like Chris Williamson, Steve Jobs, all these big names. Everyone looks for what's the sexy little secret that they did to be successful. And like you might look at, the external thing but when you just boil it back to the principles of what they done it's like they stay consistent they kept doing it yeah. they faced some challenges they kept going they didn't give up stayed resilient and all the lessons and failures they learned along the way help push them even faster forward oh, similar to what you've said here like all the experiences going through the lab there was ups and downs you know it didn't work out big picture where you might have wanted that to go but everything you took from that is what's obviously fueled you to where you're at now 100% like and I think it, there's another quote that I, I really liked that I heard the other day and I was like talking about actually doing the thing so oh, it was yeah. like yeah, have you heard it it was like um, it was like saying you're going to do the thing isn't doing the yeah. thing writing down about how you're going to do the thing isn't mm-hmm. doing the thing like criticising people that are doing the thing yeah. but doing the thing isn't doing the thing yeah, yeah. like so basically what it is is just do it just go for it like just do the thing you don't need to time block you don't need to do anything like just Mm-hmm. go for it mm-hmm. and do it like do you know what I mean it's, it's yeah, such yeah. a good way to look at things <laughs> as well like do you know what I mean I think a lot of it, we, like the the way we can look at we can look for so many excuses do you know what I mean and the excu- so many excuses that we would come up with are ridiculous Creative, not doing the thing, yeah. do you know what I mean like, <laughs> like he said like your whole like your whole draw be perfectly organised because you don't want to do the thing yeah. do you know what I mean so <laughs> yeah. it's madness but it's you just have to do it like that's it so after the lab what came next was that straight into the creative stuff you're doing now or um no so after the lab then i went and like that i was kind of looking at the the brightest thing to do mm-hmm. what was everyone else doing how can i make money how can i do this how can i do that so i, I stumbled upon uh, digital marketing and okay. so i bought a course i actually broke my foot in 2021 and i was out of work for mm. Eight weeks, I think it was for over that eight weeks. I was obviously I had nothing to do, looking around, seeing what I was doing. So I found obviously digital marketing and social media marketing. Um, so I bought a course with money I genuinely didn't have <laughs> because I was out of work and all that kind of stuff. I was probably looking back in the now, it was such a big risk, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but I'm glad if I didn't buy it. See, I'm really, I'm really into like compound, like how things compound and compound interest and all mm-hmm, that kind of stuff mm-hmm. without buying that course probably wouldn't be here now today yeah. like it's madness to think about that but yeah bought that first course and um, learned about it. it was really good really interesting so obviously went out and it was a fucking graft like reaching out to people every day nearly sending 120 no 200 emails a day just emails and oh, then i was yeah, doing yeah. outreach on instagram i think i was doing at the time instagram obviously had that limit so you were doing 50 dms an hour so i was doing 50 <laughs> dms an hour for five hours no so way. what's that fucking, 250 messages you know I mean? so t- you have 450 Bits, pieces of outreach all yeah, done myself it. do you know what I mean like and like that I don't think I would have been able to do that if I didn't have the kind of the graft instilled in me from the lab do you yeah. know what I mean yeah. um, and then obviously like experiences with like not selling stuff from, not selling pens and copies and all yeah, that yeah. Asking, but, like it's like that going door to door like you, you keep going door to door eventually you'll get a yes do you know yeah, what I yeah. mean so eventually you'll get a client and that's eventually what I did so I've done that for a while bought a couple of more courses then um, 
so basically what I did with it, I was doing like I was doing I was doing too much like I think I was doing way more than I probably should have because it would kind of had a effect on performance then do you know what I mean I was trying to like yeah. juggle too many yeah, things at once yeah. so I was doing I was doing paid ads I was doing social media management I was doing content creation I was doing like video editing I was doing loads of different services when really I should have just narrowed it down looking back on it now from what I know just narrowed yeah. it down to one or two and then go with that yeah. so eventually I, I done that for a while and then kind of switched to just doing like video editing and content creation hence why I'm that's what I'm doing now, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? So I was doing that for a while and obviously work with the likes of Rob Lipsy, big clients, um, doing some stuff with him. He was an amazing person, like he was so influential for me, like growing up and then getting the chance to actually work with someone like that, you know, and having an actual yeah. conversation with him and like just seeing how inspirational he actually is and like he's really about him and like whatever you, you see whatever about on social media, like sometimes taking the piss or whatever a fella is a grafter, like do you know what I mean? Like yeah, you yeah. cannot take that away from him. He is an absolute grafter. And it was so nice to actually have an acquaintance with that and call one of him like we mates, like do you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's how did madness. that come about with Rob Lipset? Did he so, reach out to you or funny enough I actually met this is I was in Bulgaria on holidays. Okay. Um, and Adam Power had texted me. Adam Power had a, a mutual connection with him. Like he was friends with him, and he was over in Marbella where Rob lives. And he was like, uh, I was kind of on me come up on TikTok at the time. And he said to Rob, he was like, Listen, this fella does this and this. He's flying on TikTok in a minute. Get on to him. So <laughs> Adam texted me as I was at the pool, and he was like, Ah, uh, uh, jump on a call with Rob lives in fifteen minutes. I was like, What? What, what the fuck do you mean? Like jump on? And he was like. Yeah, no, he's gonna ring it in fifteen minutes. I goes, fuck. And then I had to go upstairs, went up, <laughs> ran upstairs, had a quick shower and all changed. Fucking made sure I looked normal because I was like I had bleeding sun lotion all over yeah. me, you know, do you know yeah. what I mean? I was getting a fucking tan, like and then I get the text, so I went upstairs, got myself ready, and then it was like um it was a call with like a big group of us, like or whatever, right. and went through the call and Rob was talking about like how he's like his business kind of experience and giving us like you know little nuggets of information. It was great, like it was really informative. And then after he was like, Jay, like we'll have a chat and all, like and um, yeah, I hear you're the man on TikTok. I hear you're the man to talk to and all. I was like, I was just the confidence came out with me then. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but like, listen, you know what I mean? Like uh, my hair worked a bit like. You can see from your hard work where I am or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was doing it in a funny way. Like everyone thought it was hilarious. Like, but um, so obviously then a few days later I had a chat with Rob. Um, we kind of had a call and when I came back from Bulgaria, I came back from Hollis. Had a call with Rob. We wanted to, we set out what we wanted to achieve, all that kind of stuff. Um, so then we got to work and work with him for a good while and then. Um, like that then the age just kind of fizzled out I think I was done with that kind of stage in my life because then I seen the bigger opportunity with socials I was like why not build a personal brand that I can earn more or less the same money from but it's constantly growing like an agency is really hard work and anyone yeah. that is in American space will tell you that having an American agency is really hard work it's time consuming it's a lot and then especially when you start hiring people you have them people managing all that it's a lot like even Adam does it now and like I was only with, he was back from London no he was back from Dubai a couple of weeks ago and I was having a coffee with him and um, he was saying like it's just it's crazy he's crazy busy at the moment you know he doesn't get a second and I'm kind of glad that I'm doing what I'm doing now because I, I just don't I think I would have fell out all over the do you know what I mean? If I had kept going with the American agency and I didn't want it because I loved it and I wanted to live it at that, I wanted to live that love there. But I've taken all the work that I've learned and all the things I've learned from that and put it into my own content today. Mm-hmm. So then I just started really whacking out my own content and really just pushing and pushing. Here I am now. Yeah. What was that like at the start when you decided to start trying to grow this Jake having a seven personal brand? Yeah, <laughs> man. Um, so I've had an interesting like content journey. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I've fucking shown so much shit at the wall and eventually something stuck. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and it, that's what it is. It's yeah, just I've seen you do everything from like websites to watch movies yeah. on to uh, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon pick up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I started social media, so when I actually started my TikTok account, it was when I had the American agency. So I was putting out like informative information. Yeah, like, yeah. Which did well. Like, stuff. It actually did well. Like, and I was I was happy with it. But then I seen I actually sat down with myself one day and I was like, right, I need to change something now because I'm not the only American anymore. What can I do? And then mm-hmm. I just seen people that were reviewing websites. I was like, hmm, I'll just do that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I did the website. That fucking did madness. Like, and this is uh this is obviously became out of the pandemic. I was doing my apprenticeship and all, so I was just doing that on the side for the laugh, like. And then I remember, I'll never forget my first viral video. So I was on a website to watch movies on or something like that. And I was actually in Donegal doing my phase two. So my second year. And uh, I remember the night before I uploaded, I think it was at 10 o'clock, went to bed. I woke up the next morning. Now, bear in mind, I was only getting like maybe 10K views on, on a video. So I was like, yeah, that's great. Happy days. Mm-hmm. So I woke up to quarter million views overnight. And I was like, what? 
the fuck is going on? And then it just kept climbing and climbing and climbing. I think that video did like nearly two million views. Oh, yeah. And I like I was there checking in college and I was like checking refreshing it every two seconds, yeah. seeing the numbers jump from like say two hundred and fifty then up to two hundred thirty, ten K in like fucking two minutes and you're mm -hmm. like, What is going on? Like uh so that was a bit of a crazy one. I think I think for me then I was kinda like, Jesus, what's the next viral video? What's the next like how can I get the next one, next one, next one? And I think that's very, very, very dangerous, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, and then you yeah, can really yeah. like and it did happen to me, like I've only now learned like what it's like to just be consistent and just forget about the videos. But like back then I was constantly looking at how can I get the next video? How can I get something with like that will go viral, do you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, I did that for a bit. Then I kinda sat down with myself one day and I was like, if I really want to make money out of this, if I really want to have longevity in this thing website reviewing websites aren't gonna cut it like realistically what is that gonna do for me how is that gonna make me money do you know what i mean it's not yeah um not even about just how is it gonna make me money how is that gonna just fulfill like I, I wasn't fulfilled doing that do you know what i mean so i then i started doing full reviews and the very first full review i did was conor ryan's buddy cup when he opened it right um mm. and did you tell conor you were doing it or he didn't even right. oh no he did sorry he knew of me because we sent stuff out to him right from okay. the lab yeah so this is what i'm saying i've i've had all the connections most Fantasy of the connections i have now then, is from yeah, the lab yeah. so the people that i know with the likes of connor adam fogarty all them kind of people they know me from the lab like they know jay like the young fella jay yeah, do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? <laughs> um so yeah i went out and done that review and that was the first pool video i ever done and that did like 100k views and i was, was like it a positive review or a negative one um at the time i was only open so it was actually it was Jesus. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. positive um yeah, yeah. like it was good like i thought it was good i only now i only got a few small bits like johnny i got a croissant two cookies coffee yeah, yeah. do you know what yeah. I mean yeah. really, you really can't give a bad review about that but I gave it a review anyway it did it like over 100k and I was like fucking hell like this field stuff is actually this is really good now this is um, this was in 2022 no 2021 okay so 2021 and then I kind of carried on with the field reviews they were doing well that's why we're a kind of I got known for a series called Eating Shy so <laughs> that's what it was called a bit of a mad name but like i always thought it was a good name because it was a good hook do you know what i mean yeah, i had a yeah. good hook eat, like welcome to part four of eating shite and people are like what what are you, yeah, yeah. Like, what are you talking about like because especially because i had a really big irish demographic so people like people know what shite means do you know what yeah. i mean so you're like what the fuck's he talking about like i'll watch this like and then that's it like that contributed to i'd say about that brought me up to the about I'd say about like 40k like do you know what I mean sure, like yeah. the websites got me to about 15 and then from 15 all the way up to 40 and was filled um and then I kind of said as you would have saying like I haven't deleted any of my videos so anyone that is watching this like you can go down the very end of my page and you'll see from when I was talking about affiliate marketing with mouthwash to full reviews to doing daily vlogs so it's it's been a big transition for me um and it's been a lot of learning I have like I said I've traveled much so much shit at the wall and I've seen what's stuck and now only now in 2023 am i actually happy with the content on crane like i love like the content on crane for anyone that doesn't know me or has gotten this fan of the podcast still haven't got a fucking clear what i do so i do like full content i do fashion content obviously the vlogs are a big thing for me now they they've really kind of like mm -hmm. catapulted me um, and then just lifestyle content and everything in between do you know what i mean like the good thing about like the likes of lifestyle and fashion like there's so many avenues you can like venture off like we were talking about beforehand how can i create all this content is because like say for lifestyle you could do skincare you could do like you could do running like do you know what i mean it's lifestyle it's within lifestyle content so it all ties in together which is really good so it's an endless amount of content but yeah like i transitioned then from obviously doing the field then i kind of went off i went back to doing a little bit of websites because i was like ah oh, this field stuff isn't working i was comparing myself like comparison is the tea for joy mm. it is it is so so true and that's the truest quote i've ever seen comparison is the, like the tea for joy and i was looking at people i was like why am i not there like why am i like yeah. i'm i'm posting more than them i'm doing better than them my content is better and i was like i was just like what is going on like why is it not happening and uh so i went back to doing what i knew and doing what i knew did well which is probably a wrong move but if i didn't make that move i wouldn't have understood and wouldn't have learned why i didn't go but like why it was the bad idea to go back yeah, to that yeah. so i went back to doing the websites and filled at the same time um then the field started picking up again i was like okay filled and then i started doing then obviously the, the likes of the amazon find and all that was kind of my first transition into lifestyle content okay that would tie in with lifestyle content yeah, yeah. like the stuff i was kind of reviewing um so yeah that did well and then we were in bulgaria so i was doing stuff then i was tying it more into like the field stuff of like uh trying different kinds of monster and all that kind of stuff do you know what i mean trying random american sweets doing like food like that and then mixing it in with a little bit of lifestyle um 
and then I tried to do a little bit of fashion as well then do you know mm-hmm. what I mean like I started transitioning into that that was the f- um, what we did in Bulgaria and then came home then just hammered home by doing the field went really hard with the field then like I said it got me up to about 40, 40k um, and then after that we started introducing the vlogs um, and then the vlogs were the vlogs I absolutely love doing the vlogs I have to say I fucking love it yeah. um, I love the whole creation process of it I've fallen like see from the lab even the creative process of doing that has transitioned over. Even the creative process of doing like content creation for people has transitioned over. So all the things that I've yeah. learned from them years of experience of getting and doing all these things and doing it yourself, which is a really big thing I believe in from at the start, do everything yourself and then you'll find out what you're good at, what you're mm-hmm. not good at, what your strong suits are and what you aren't so strong yep. um, with doing. So I learned that and then like, like I love telling a story through a lens. And the vlogs, you can kind of see that, like, you have a start, middle, and an end. Like, say now, a big, like, inspiration for me is Casey Neistat over in America. He's the biggest, probably, vlogger in, in the whole of the world. Probably. Um, and he's just, he's, so, he's just a creative genius. Like, do you know what I mean? The way he's, and, and he doesn't do anything over the top. He doesn't use his fancy transitions. He doesn't yeah, use yeah, fancy yeah. cameras. doesn't use anything. He uses one good camera, one good mic. Has a tripod, doing different angles. But it's the way he can tell a story. It just can't be taught. You need to learn that from doing experience. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I've, I've like storytelling isn't just learned over a year it's learned over years and years of yeah, like yeah. practice and like uh, that's what i'm trying to do at the minute like i'm trying to tell a story every time i do a vlog um which is, it seems to be doing well like so yeah it does stuff you're still in an apprenticeship in both ways then finishing your apprenticeship yeah. in electrical engineering oh, but constantly in your apprenticeship yeah. here now with content creation yeah but i think like i don't think you ever stop learning being honest with yeah. anything in life i don't think you until ever, you choose to yeah, yeah, yeah like i don't think you ever, you're always a student do you know what i mean and i think like that then it's very easy to get in over your head thinking like, yeah, well, I've made it now. But when you think you know everything, that's when you're in trouble. Oh, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I've always said that. And I think for me anyway, I always want to learn off someone like, do you know what I mean? And it's great. Like, And I think it was, there was a quote that was said to me a couple of years ago. And it was like, you're always thinking about the people that you're trying to get to and you're trying to be like, but you're not, for, you're forgetting about the people that are trying to be like you and get to your level. Mm-hmm. So it's good like that you have that kind of like look out on things and f- people yeah, are trying yeah. to learn from me. So I need to keep doing what I'm doing to try and learn from that person. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just a chain reaction then. Do yeah, you know? yeah. The um, but yeah, man, it's, it's been a crazy journey, like crazy, crazy journey. Yeah. Stuff, man. And like, I don't know if you're comfortable with the term influencer, so I don't want to throw that on you. <laughs> but just in terms of like that space in general, at what point did you kind of feel yourself sort of entering into influencer territory and what's yeah. it been like being in that yeah. world? Yeah, man, a hundred percent. Um, this is actually good that we're talking about this. So my kind of transition into that, all that kind of influencer kind of space. Um, so how do I kind of, where did I fucking start? Like, so we did field and started doing lifestyle content a little bit of it then. And then, um, my first ever event, so this was kind of tying in with like the influencer space. My first ever event was a pennies event and they were launching, was it this year? Yeah, it was only this year. My very first event I went to was a pennies event this year. They were launching a new collection in the head office and I got the text uh, while I was in work. So I was in work and basically I got the text. So on my lunch, I flew home. I got chain, like I got clothes to put in the back of the car. I didn't even get chains. Oh, it was for I was, that day, I was, was still it? In work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez, I was only like in a couple of hours. Like. <laughs> so I flew home, got clothes as quick as I could, tore the fucking room apart. Like the room was up and because it was like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna wear? Like <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. so big. Like because it was like my first ever event and it was pennies. Like do you know what I mean? That was crazy for me. Um. So yeah, put on my stuff in the car, then flew into town, flew into the car park, got changed in the car. So there is a video going back. There's actually a video. I did a vlog on it. I think I did a vlog on it. And you can see me getting changed in the car, spraying the old. And I'd say if someone was like, <laughs> I think it was hotbox in the car or something. Like the amount of smoke that was in the fucking car from the, the old. And, and it was the quickest I've ever got changed in my life. <laughs> like I was there in the back seat, fucking taking me blade and jo- like taking me trousers as an all off and putting on like getting yeah, changed yeah. in the clothes. And that I look back on that now and I'm like, if I hadn't missed that event, like I'm t- like I was saying to you, it's like yeah, the, yeah. the compound interest. Like if I hadn't missed that event, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now. Like, and that's the way I look at it. I think that is so amazing, like, that I did go to that event. And, like, I met people there that I knew from when I did the lab. So I didn't completely go in blind. Like, I knew a couple of people. And then because I was kind of, like, on my come up, as they say, Mm -hmm. I kind of knew people from online. And it was my first time meeting them. It was my first time meeting, like, the likes of Brandon, Shanice, like, all them kind of people. Do you know what I mean? Which I'm, like, that'd be, like, one of my best mates and all now. Like, they'd be really good friends of mine now. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's crazy how, how far it's, it's come from that event, from getting changed in, that, in the car. Now, don't get me wrong, I still get fucking changed in the car because, like, <laughs> it's just, my car's like a wardrobe job at this stage, you know what I mean? Um, because I go straight from work to events, like, sometimes, so. But I don't mind that, I think it's amazing. Like, oh, like I do be like, 
like this is class like do you know what I mean like people will look at that like oh my god you're getting changed in your car like I'm like that's unreal that it's is journey, savage it? like yeah. it's just it is like yeah you're like this is the journey like this is what it's gonna be like like say when I'm old I'm gonna like when I'm old I want to be looking back like what a fucking journey like, yeah what a, yeah. but like do you know what I mean so deadly man I wanted to chat a little bit about obviously you lost your father just over a year ago just as much as you're comfortable sharing obviously because I know it's still recent enough and that's a, a big transition in life to me but how did that event and all overall that experience help shape you for where you're at now yeah so um obviously like I put up a I put up a video the other day of my dad's um one year anniversary that was on the 11th <coughs> that again? sorry Right, so obviously I put up a video there the other day on the 11th of October. That was my one-year anniversary for mm-hmm. my dad's, like, obviously passing away. Um, now, I didn't think anything of the video. I just said I put it out there because I wanted people to obviously see. Like, I didn't put much up about my dad passing away. I put it up when he did, like, saying, listen, yeah. like, um, anyone that knew him, because I knew that there was people that knew me, that knew him, that yeah. probably wouldn't have, like, he didn't have any social media yeah, or anything like that. So it was just more or less to let people know. Um, so I put it up and I put up a story here and there and you know I wouldn't be really making really big noise about it. I talked about it on Sam's podcast the pair pod but very briefly yeah and um, because I, I just didn't want people to see that kind of side of me do you know what I mean I don't know why like looking at it now I don't know why because maybe maybe I thought like it was just it was really vulnerable do you know what I mean I was really vulnerable at that stage um, and that was only when it was like six months I think when oh, yeah. I was on Sam's podcast do you know so I put that video out there on the 11th and the response has been like absolutely blew me away i went to an event the next day a jewelry event and there was people coming up to me, like women coming up to me like grown women with kids like coming up to me saying do you know what that helped me so much like there was one lady i had a conversation with she has three kids and dad like her husband obviously passed away like you know mm-hmm. um and when the kids were quite young and like she was saying that that just it related i relate so much to it do you know what i mean and yeah I, it's like that's it's just amazing like and even the comments and all like the messages i was getting there was so many people had texted me so many people had commented saying how much it's helped them like that like there was people commenting saying that they only got lost that like the parent i love one last week mm. and that this video has helped them so much and that's that's what i've always wanted to achieve like i know when i was doing websites at the end of the day the websites were helping people but like the field was helping people i've always wanted yeah. to help people and try and like my my goal now i'm when I started doing like the lifestyle content was to help people, motivate people to chase their dreams, no matter what, like no matter the circumstance, because at the end of the day, like this, like my dad's like passing away and my dad's death has definitely taught me like a lot about like you do only get, like you only get one go mm. at this, do you know what I mean? Life, you don't get any, you only get one go at life, like you don't get any do-overs, you don't get any repeats, there's no respawn button, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's one life, you need to live it to the fullest. And I think that's what I've tried to see over this past year of like really trying to be present and in the moment and just kind of appreciate a lot more because at the end of the day like you can sit down you can complain and whatever like you have everyone has problems in their life do you know what i mean but at yeah. the end of the day like there are only problems do you know what i mean like you could genuinely be gone tomorrow like we could like a touch wood for fuck's sake but yeah. <laughs> like we're having this conversation now like, this could be the last conversation that uh, any yeah. one of us in this room could ever have do you know what i mean yep. and when you think of it like that it does kind of put you in in a mindset of like just live every every day to your fullest do you know what i mean like don't worry about the small stuff don't sweat the small stuff because at the end of the day it means nothing like it does like it's it's yeah now it's a mad way to it's a mad thing to happen like obviously when my aunt passed away that was really tough for me and really tough at a young age and like that it could have went one or two ways but because i had the foundation that i had it was just amazing like the people mm-hmm. that had in me in me like small circle or whatever like was amazing but like me dad was a different kind of it was a different yeah. kind of tragedy, do you know what I mean? It was yeah. a different kind of loss. Like it's something that like I'd, anyone that's lost a parent will know exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm still learning about it. I'm, like it's only been a year. It feels like it's only happened yesterday. Um, it's definitely one of the hardest moments of my life. Being totally honest with you, and like that video, I'm just so happy that I helped so many people out because I wanted it. I wanted everyone to see it, the type of person that he was. You know what I mean? And there was people like it was mad. Like there was people that commented on it that knew him. Mm. I'm mean, like, oh, I played football with him. Oh, yeah, like, I knew yeah. him. He's such a nice fella. Like, and everyone has said that he's such a lovely person. And I'm, I'm so happy that people have that good outlook on him. And I'm just glad that I got to, to show everyone what my dad was really like. And lovely you can man. see a lot of him through me. Like anyone that did know him, you can see a lot of him through me. And I'm trying to like bring that to fruition and bring it into the present and help yeah, as yeah. many people as I can. You know. Ah, no, that's beautiful. Yeah, man. I think so. it takes a lot of strength and vulnerability just to be able to open up about things like that. And yeah. Mm-hmm. So look, obviously yeah, respect no. to you for doing it, but I think people at home listening, yeah, anyone who's lost a parent, I think will get a lot of value from yeah. what you've anyone just said. that has lost anyone. Like, like that, that is a crazy thing, and I think it, you only, 
like death is a crazy thing and I think you have to live with someone for it to really kind of register with you yeah. and for me like losing someone like a parent is just it's one of the most unimaginable pains that I can ever spend in my life like not so long ago like I'll be totally honest I sat down again I just fucking broke down like I, mm. I just I've, it comes in waves do you know what I mean like yeah, for me yeah. anyway and like I have no problem talking about it really now because I want I from that video I now have no problem talking about because yeah. I know the amount of people that this can help and how many people it can get through the day. Do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, like it's it's tough. Like it is quite tough. But at the end of the day, like like I say, you only get one life. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. You need to live it to the fucking fullest. Like because Absolutely. like you could be gone tomorrow. Like yeah, and it's crazy. Happens, and like yeah. as I've said, and like I even said it on the pair pod, like. Like, look after your people, like, check in on your people, because at the end of the day, you don't know when that last conversation is going to be, you don't know when you're going to next see them, like, there was a picture that went around years ago, I don't know what he is now, and it's like, a, it's an animated picture, and it's like a fella about to stand on, like, a, like, do you know what, pitchfork, like, about to hit him in the face, yeah. or whatever, about to fall down on a shore, about to get hit by a car, but he's like, waving at the person across right, the road, yeah, but yeah. it was like, you never know when the last good boy is going to be, do you know what I mean? And mm. it's so, so true. I think it's mad to think about it in a way, isn't it? Like, yeah. that oh, man. you genuinely, and it's it's a thing where you actually cannot tell when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It could happen at any time. That's why yeah, I'm yeah. saying, like, for me anyway, that's why I'm trying not to sweat the small stuff and trying to be more present. Like, when I went to London with pennies, like, I'm sure we'll talk about that in a bit, like, but, like, I was trying, I said for that, that event, I want to be as present as I can because it was such a big thing and mm. such an amazing opportunity and I, like I've always before that was kind of like yeah that's cool what's next what's next how yeah, do I get yeah, to yeah. the next level next level but for that I actually sat there at the event and uh, I sat there on the table and I was like just looking around I was like what is going on <laughs> do you know <laughs> what I mean it yeah. really did register with me like this is actually happening so sick man yeah. I was curious wait, I know the last with your auntie you said that was a bit of a prolonged that was kind of dragged out a bit and it was yeah. expected to an extent yeah. was your dad similar or was that more of a sudden no it was uh, it was actually just down now really. but I remember I'm, I'll never forget and there's actually a story um, that I put up just before my nanny rang me and I was editing a Rob Lipsy video and I got I was grateful every day right mm. then I think 20 minutes later my nanny rings me I mean, nana, my nanny never rings me. Like, right, I would yeah. ring her every so often. I'd say, I like, you know, because I'm really close to me, nanny. Mm. Like, really close to her. And uh, she rings me and she goes, uh, she just said, like, yeah, that. I was like, what? what are you talking about? What's wrong with like, And she was like, yeah, that's. She actually said it, like, yeah, that's dead. And I was like, I thought she was joking. Like, I was like, fuck yeah, off, will you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, no. And she, I could hear her crying. I was like, it was just, I, it was like the whole fucking, me whole energy, me whole yeah, life yeah, yeah. just went out like down to my body on my feet i was like what the fuck just happened so kayla's ma dropped me over rang michaela told her she left work came over and uh yeah not not one of the sites i was definitely expecting like it, it mm. was hard like obviously because no one had nothing had been moved because it was so sudden everything had to be like analyzed and yeah, in like case there was lost. anything happened or mm -hmm. do you know like it, it, because it was only him and me nanny in the house whether there yeah. was anything like that not that there was but uh, yeah of course obviously uh, that's the that's the procedure, procedure that has to happen. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite difficult saying that. Um, but yeah, it just it's it's fucking crazy, man. And it's definitely um, it's definitely harder when it's sudden. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like with my auntie, mm. it was kind of prolonged. We knew it was coming. Yeah. Obviously, it's not good when it happens, but we knew it was coming. We knew she was going in a good spot. Like mm. she was in a good space. She was surrounded by her family, all of our loved ones. With my dad, like it was just instant, and that was it. Like um, so yeah, it was it was quite tough, and then. It was uh, like, like I said, when I broke down the other day, like I was looking through messages that he would send me and all, and again, it's just he was saying that he wanted to go on holidays and all that kind of stuff. And you yeah, know, like yeah, yeah. I think thinking about that and saying that is like, fuck, like you just need to live life, man. Like you just need to go for it. Like, what is the point of stress and all this stuff? Like, say if you're in a job you don't like, you're in a relationship you don't like, you're in a friend group you don't like, fuck all that. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You could be gone tomorrow. Just go for it. Like, take the risk, take the chance. Like, just do, like, just do it. Like, join you know in. Like, just do the thing, as he yeah. said. But yeah, it's. It's tough, man. Tough. Um, 100%. Still coming to get like that. I'm st it's still so fresh. Like, you can probably tell. Like, I'm. Uh, yeah, it's just mad. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. I know, man. I know. It definitely rings home your point of like, you never know when it could be over. Putting that into perspective of madness. All the it? little like, shit it, that we sweat day in, day out, yeah. and all the little stories we make up in our heads of why we can't do shit or why we shouldn't go after yeah. goals or dreams because yeah. this person will say this or that person will think yeah. that's like it's, it's so crazy. <laughs> like you, you really do only get one goal, of it and life is life can be amazing. But like you need to just like you say, don't sweat the small stuff because at the end of the day, you could be gone tomorrow. Like you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Now it's definitely helped me and um, be more appreciative of like being in the moment. Being grateful for life, do you know what I mean? And not really sweating all the small problems because mm. 
like we say, like it could be all over. Yeah, man, I'm sure he's proud looking at him. Ah, hope so. And, uh, hope so. And one other thing that just sprang to mind, as they say, everyone dies twice. So you die, obviously, when you die, but you die then when the last time someone mentions your name. So yeah. as long as you're out here doing your thing and spreading the message, man, it's like that legacy lives on. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, and there's a there's actually a quote here. Like for anyone that doesn't know, I love me quotes. Uh, like, I years now that, yeah. but like <laughs> anyone that doesn't know, I love me fucking quotes. Like there was a quote the other day, and it was like that. You have two lives, and the first was it. You have two lives when was it. You have two lives, but when the first life, the, yeah, the second so one starts when, when you realize you only. Oh have yeah, one sorry, yeah. So it's like yeah. So the quote goes: You have two lives, and the second one starts when you realize you only have one. Yeah, and it's such an impactful oh, and powerful fact. quote. Like do you know what I mean, and it's it's so true. So yeah, I'm just trying to do me and help as many people as I can with that. Like obviously, I don't want my page to become totally around that of course, I, li- yeah. I like doing like every so often like you know like putting up quotes or putting up like you know motivational videos yeah yeah definitely because i know it does help people like now like before i put that video up i was like ah, why am i putting these up this is not gonna but after saying that like there's so many people that commented on it saying like i didn't even know like you know yeah, yeah. you're doing all this and you have all this going on like that brings it back to like with social media and like people commenting and shit comments and like like I say my comment section isn't bad like yeah. I'm, I'm delighted just with my comments yeah, just, <laughs> just a scam board and everything like, you can do with a scam board in the wall like yeah alright like fuck off like, um, but like I laugh at them comments but like even at that like you, you genuinely don't know what like even people on the street yeah. like you genuinely don't know what someone is going through you don't know what someone is, has going on in the background do you know what I mean um, and it's, it's so so true like and you just have to be kind of not like be kind to everyone and all but kind of understand that like you don't know what anyone is going through you know what i mean so just be a bit more mindful with that but like it's madness like if someone takes if someone is taking like 10 seconds out of the day to watch your video then comment shit on your video what does that say about oh, them do you yeah, know what yeah. i mean and I've, I've looked at that and i'm like why is like i used to i used to now i don't do it anymore but when i was coming up i used to like reply to comments <laughs> yeah, now i wouldn't be any mad like i'd comment back saying i love you and all like do you yeah. know what i mean like wind them up even more like i used to wind people up that were commenting bad videos yeah. but like now it's just as simple as pressing the lead comment mm-hmm. i don't get bothered but like i genuinely couldn't i don't get bothered by them um because like I said to you earlier, like I don't get bothered by bad comments anymore or any like anything like that on my page or any videos. Not that I get many, but when I do, like it doesn't bother me because I know the people that I'm helping. Do you know what I mean? I know that I'm actually helping people, so I couldn't give a fuck about bad comments. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't care. Like you know, I'm I'm doing my thing. I know where I want to get to, and nothing is gonna stop me from getting there. Do you know? I think that's it. Oh, go ahead, Leo. No, do you want to speak more about that? Or no, no. Yeah, I was gonna. I said I think that's a nice place to wrap it up to leave it that's our message yeah i just wanted to ask you yeah. about the the pennies event in london because oh, i know that was big for you yeah Can man you talk to us a bit about yeah, yeah it was it was crazy man like it's such a mad experience um so obviously we went to pennies that reached out and said that like there's an event in london with john stenzel he's launching the nba collection oh, yeah, and i was yeah. like all right yeah yeah deadly yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool yeah i'll be there yeah in reality i was fucking losing my shit <laughs> like i was like this is madness like it's absolutely crazy um and yeah, so we obviously we got flown over. There uh, was a few Irish. Yeah, so there was me, kind of thing, me, it? James Doyle, King, Abib, and then Eric Roberts. Um, brilliant group, actually a brilliant group to bring over. Such a good laugh. And then Paddy Smith actually met us over there because he lives in London, so he met us over there. But it was a brilliant group. Like I don't think he could have had a better group going over. Um, but yeah, we went over, checked in the hotel, and it was just amazing. Like it was just. Just like the hotel was fucking class, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it was just, I think it was like a, a Mandarin, it was called. It was, a, it was just a beautiful hotel. Checked into the hotel and then uh, obviously went to the event. And they were kind of telling us, like, throughout the day, like, there is going to be famous people here. Like, so just don't, <laughs> don't, don't like, lose your, lose shit, your yeah. shit. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, we can't tell you who because they knew, but they couldn't tell us because they wanted it to be a surprise yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we got there and outside there was like a little photo part. So we walked up to the photo part and then obviously getting our photos and all that kind of stuff. And um, so. <laughs> I was getting me photo, right? And uh, someone goes, oh, there is. And I turned. And then fucking Wes Nelson's beside me waiting to get his photo. I was like, I, I, I actually looked like that. I was like, and then I looked again. I was like, what the fuck? And then, like, I didn't say what the fuck, but I said in my head, like, holy shit, that's fucking Wes Nelson. So I was like, oh, there you get your photo. I was like, I'm done now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, but like that kind of, that was the caliber of people that were there. So you had Wes Nelson. Then I was walking around. There was people there that you were watching when you were younger. Like you had fucking... You had Ashley Waters, like top boy, do you know what I mean? Mm. There you had fucking Akin Fenwa, like <laughs> so many big influential people. And I was walking around like, I was walking around like that, like what the fuck? Like it was madness because like the difference between an event there and in Dublin was just like oh, levels, day. like yeah. it, there's levels to it. Like it was, it was such an amazing experience. And like I said, like at one point I sat there and I was looking around like, what is going on? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
and like it's it's crazy and i'm so so grateful for opportunities like that because i know they don't come to everyone and i've put in a lot of graft to get to where i am do you know what i mean mm -hmm. like and like that i think it all boils down to how bad do you really want to succeed it all boils down to how bad you really want to succeed do you know what i mean like yeah. are you gonna sacrifice nights out like at the end of the day right i've always said this like nights out aren't going anywhere parties aren't going anywhere and anywhere like do you know when like yeah. spending sprays shopping sprays any of that stuff isn't going anywhere lock in for six months absolutely graft because at the end of the day like we were just talking about consistency is the key and that is like a so so true like i've been so consistent over the last few months and it's like literally catapulted yeah, me. yeah, yeah. and hopefully it keeps going and like i'm just so happy and grateful where it is going and hopefully it just keeps growing and growing and we fucking yes we're going go. back for a round two and is that penny's event would that be your kind of so far the peak of what yeah, that's doing? the um yeah that's the biggest no, it's the podcast surely isn't it? Oh, yeah, this podcast, right? yeah no 100 no 100 but yeah no in terms of like achievements um pennies is definitely up there like there's been so many like this year has been fucking crazy oh, man, like, this yeah. has been the biggest like this has been the best year in my life and i'll put that down like the, like from being brought away to london with pennies to like walking with coca-cola like i've recently just done oh, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know i mean like i'm working with brands that i have number one years for years number two that are absolutely conglomerate do you know Massive, what i mean yeah, yeah and the fact that i'm getting the opportunity to even like be in the same vicinity being that brand's kind of like do you know yeah. oh do you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. like that i'm actually in not that i'm i'm not in there do you know what i mean I'll, i will eventually get there but yeah, i'm not yeah. in there like i'm still walking and i'm still nowhere where i want to be like i'm nowhere near where i want to be do you know what i mean mm. and eventually i will get there but it's all like i say it's all about consistency hard work like it's just mad like yeah you have the pennies it's definitely the biggest team before that was backstage a fucking uh metro boom and at longitude do you know what i mean like, okay, like yeah. being backstage at longitude on the main stage and looking out at everyone i'm like what the fuck is going on <laughs> like, i've just had so many great opportunities <laughs> this year and I, I can't thank all the people that do support me enough like at the end of the day we were actually only talking about this the other day like like some youtubers i say some social media people or whatever they overlook people that support them do you know mm. what i mean like like, I understand, like, it can get a bit, like, hectic with photos and how people ask for photos and get a bit annoying. But at the end of the day, right, you have to remember, that's that person's only one time meeting you. That's that yeah. first time meeting you. Obviously, that could be your 100,000 time of meeting someone that follows you, but that's that first person. Mm. Like, that's that person's first yeah, time definitely. meeting you. And at the end of the day, you're only in the position you are because of those people following you and liking your videos, sharing your videos, engaging with you. And you only get the, all these accolades and all these achievements because of the people that do support you. That's why I'm so incredibly appreciative of all the people that support me in any type of way possible because i at the end of the day i know i wouldn't be i wouldn't be sitting here without support to have i wouldn't be getting all these achievements doing all these great things without the support to have so you have to be thankful every single day now i know obviously it can be it can be yeah, get sure, a bit tired yeah. like but at the end of the day just it's the first time meeting you know, that's the way i've taught about it. that's the way i've learned and uh, that's the way i've been told by people that i know that are big like like with millions of followers that you have to remember this this person's first time meeting you um but yeah like i wanted to obviously touch on as well like i'm they would probably put this back before yeah, like yeah. to the end but like i think your circle is so important as well like i did want to say this because obviously like a lot of people have asked me like how do i do it like how do i stay consistent how do i stay accountable and all that kind of stuff i think it is genuinely the people that you surround yourself with like you are who you surround yourself with you surround yourself with like me i surround that stat surround myself with a lot of marketing people i got called american surrounded myself with a lot of business people got called a business surrounded myself with a lot of like say influencers creators people i looked up to got called a creating do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it, what's it the quote goes like if you surround yourself by five millionaires you're going to become six. the six millionaire do you know what i mean it's, you surround yourself by five like people that don't want anything in life you're going to be the person that doesn't want anything in life and i think i've been very lucky myself like with the with the network and the foundation that i've built like my circle is so small like i wouldn't have many friends if that makes sense i yeah. would have a lot of people that i know i would say hello to but i have a very very small circle and a very small people amount of people that i would listen to and really take their information on board because i know that they want the best for me like truly want the best for me like say michaela's family like as we were talking about families like her family have been immensely supportive of, of me do you know what i mean like and it's crazy the amount of support like it's really good as well like i would have looked up to her like say her dad her granddad because her, 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 grand, her granddad is a businessman do you know what i mean he's a very successful businessman at that and i have looked at like looked at him look at what he's done and i've been like i want that do you know what i mean i want to be able to do that and he's been a very big inf like inspiration for me same with her whole family they're all grafters do you know what i mean and that's where like I've learned that from the lab, through the lab, because I've been with Michaela for so long. So I've seen that. So that I've put that into the lab. I've put that into my content creation. I've put it into the marketing agency. Everything that I do, because I know what good graft, like 
I know where graph can take you. It can take you to the fucking sky. The sky is the limit, you know what I mean? Um, so I think having a very important like network, and I'm so so thankful for the foundation that I have have built and the people that have like you know met. Yep. So yeah. Oh, man. Closing tradition. Yeah, we have a closing tradition. Obviously, we're gonna ask you to leave a question, and yeah. then on the next episode, the next guest will answer the question. So, what this, question do you want to leave? This is a fucking great question. Who's next? Right? This is a great question. This is a great question. Whoever's on next. I've looked after you with this. <laughs> right. So my question for the next guest is, right, how big would you dream if you knew you couldn't fail? I like it. I like it. Big like question. It. You'll see how the answer comes. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see what they say. But I'm looking forward to seeing the answer. <laughs> yeah, tune in. Tune in. But Jay, thanks very much for, very much for your time, number one, but for your honesty, your openness, your vulnerability for sure, and the highs and lows from all aspects of the journey you've been on the last last few years, all the way back to the school days, but even the last few months have been hectic for you, and yeah. just your attitude, your outlook, the way you go about your craft, the mindset you bring to what you do, not just dwelling on, you know, getting complacent on what you've achieved so far, but looking to what's next and what's ahead, man. You've got two fans sitting across from you here, so, so looking forward to seeing you continue Cheers, to lads, prosper. Thank you, much. thank you very much, I really appreciate it, and looking forward to seeing the podcast go forward. Thank you, thank you so man. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Dave.